Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSR, HealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSR HealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. We think pretty is pretty important in all things in beauty. Welcome to Radio AMB, designed for those who want to live a long and vibrant life. I'm Patty Smucker, a licensed cosmetologist who's been in the beauty industry for over 40 years. Radio AMB stands for American Made Beauty, and it's where we tell the secrets behind the making of health and beauty products. Our segment sponsor today is AmericanMadeBeauty.com, a beauty platform designed to help consumers find beauty companies that are implementing the industry's best practices to bring you quality products and services. Go to AmericanMadeBeauty.com to find beauty products and services that meet a strict set of standards that reflect their American heritage. Check out our newest brands that have just joined us, Seven Hair Care, Laguna Candles, and buy direct USA. That's AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Earlier this year, I was feeling apprehensive about our political environment and the uncertainty of the future. I invested some time reading and developing some new insights to create, to create some sense-making of the future. Through that work, I had the opportunity to attend a seminar at the Institute for the Future, also referred to as IFTF which is an independent, nonprofit research organization based in Northern California. IFTF is made up of a core research staff and creative design studio that works together to bring practical foresight for a world undergoing rapid change. Their experienced forecasters represent a range of disciplines from the social sciences, public policy, and technical domains. They're joined by creative designers who render their research in accessible and innovative print and digital formats. Their network extends to include affiliates that bring diverse perspectives and experiences to research and events. From university professors to independent thought leaders and hands-on innovators, ITFT is in the forefront of new ideas and practices worldwide. During our feature segment, you're going to meet one of their esteemed researchers who you will learn has been wired for change all his life. You'll meet Mark Fraunfelder and, and, the, and factors that have led to the work he's doing today. Mark will share his excitement around emerging technologies called blog, um, block uh, chain and bit, um, bitcoins. During the next uh, three segments of the show, we'll take uh, you through a fascinating conversation about other things catching the attention of an award-winning blogger, writer, filmmaker, researcher who writes about uh, cultural curiosity and interesting technologies. And yes, we'll tie it all back to wellness by the end of the show. Let's not waste another moment. Let me introduce you and welcome Mark. I'm so delighted to have you here with us today. Thank you so much, Patty. It's great to be on. Well, you know, I, I, the, when I start to look at all the things that you have done, you're research director for the Institute for the Future, founding editor-in-chief of Make Magazine, and co-founder of Boing Boing. You're also chief uh, uh, editor-in-chief of CoolTools.org, um, and you were an editor for Wired from 93 to 98. Uh, you know, just some very cool things. Tell me, d- did um, did you start sort of this creative thinking before or after you graduated from Colorado State with a bachelor's in uh, mechanical engineer? You know, I I was always interested in in uh, science and technology and engineering, and that's why I I went to school and, and got a degree in mechanical engineering. But I, at the same time, I was really interested in in English and art and things like that. So I think it was a combination of, of art and science that really uh, is what drives me and inspires me. And 
why I'm, I'm so excited about kind of the do-it-yourself movement and the STEAM movement in school because it combines all of the things that I'm interested in uh, and, you know, helps people become more creative. Yeah. Right. And that's always been kind of the interesting thing to me about um, this whole world is the, the tools that are out there now that allow anyone to become a maker of cool things. It's, it's a really cool. 3D printers, laser cutters, all that kind of stuff is becoming inexpensive and, and accessible. Right. So, so tell us, so today your focus is research at, at ITF, um, IFTF, but tell us a bit about, the, the encapsulate all the things that you're involved with today. Sure. <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, at, at Institute for the Future, I'm a research director there. And I am doing a lot of stuff for all the different groups there because um, I'm working on turning their research into interesting stories. So that's, uh, you know, looking at the blockchain, which is the technology that powers uh, the Bitcoin digital currency. I I made a video about that to try to explain it simply. I um, am putting together a magazine for them. We've had one issue out, and we're doing another one this year. So we... uh, a, a series of podcasts that I've created with with uh, with the folks there. So, really, I'm kind of working in producing content for Institute for the Future, and in a way, that's a lot of what I've done throughout my career. I, I was at Wired Magazine as an editor there, working on tech-based stories, and then Make Magazine is a technology project magazine that started in 2005, and it's a it's a quarterly magazine that shows people how to build rockets and robots and remote control vehicles and telepresence submarines and all sorts of fun uh, projects. And, and then Boing Boing is a blog that I do that looks at kind of cultural curiosities, interesting things happening in the real world and on the Internet, and I've been doing that for a really long time. It actually started as a print magazine that my wife and I did in 1988. And we were interested in the time of covering things like the way that computers were getting inexpensive and getting in the hands of artists and creative people who normally didn't have access to that. Computers used to be so expensive, and then in the 80s that they started to become affordable. So that's what Boing Boing focused on. And then the, I guess the other project that I am uh, working on a lot is called Cool Tools, which is a tool review site. Every day we look at a new interesting tool and uh, it's not necessarily like a typical tool that you would imagine, like a screwdriver or a wrench, although we might do those. But it also could be an interesting map or a book or a website or uh, uh, any kind of instructions online, an interesting online video that shows you how to patch a hole in your wall or something like that. So it's, a, it's really a website at looking at effective ways to make a change around you in the, in the world around you. So I guess that kind of wraps up the stuff that I'm, I've been working on. Well, but and as your work is unfold, I read that you that 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 part of the artist um, and designer um, also has played a very big uh, part of what you've done, and that you caught the attention of Bill, Biddy, Billy Idol, that led to a pretty famous project. Can you tell us about that? Oh yeah, that was really fun. Um, this was in 1993, and. Uh, my phone. I was doing Boing Boing as a magazine with my wife at the time. I got a phone call from a guy with a kind of a rough London accent, <laughs> and um, he said he was Billy Idol. And I, I thought it, some, someone was just kidding with me, and so I just kind of played along for a while. And I realized it probably was Billy Idol. <laughs> he said that he had picked up a copy of Boing Boing on a newsstand in, in L.A., and that he really liked the design sensibility of it, and he was wondering if um, I could come over to his house where he had a a Macintosh and his recording studio and everything and work with him on designing the cover for his upcoming CD, which was called Cyberpunk. Wow. And so I said, sure. So it was great. I I hopped on my motorcycle (laughs) that I had at the time and went over to his house in the Hollywood Hills, and he was very polite and nice and, uh, you know, it's interesting that he's really an intelligent person and the Billy Idol that you see is just a persona. Uh-huh. And, um, that's, that's exactly what he told me. He said, you know, I'm kind of like 
uh, Mickey Mouse at Disneyland, and it's my role that I play, and I have a lot of fun doing it. Uh-huh. And, uh, so anyway, it was fun. I, I ended up doing a, quite a bit of work for him, doing designing posters and CDs, and um, I wrote the ad copy for the, for the print ads for, his, uh, for the album and things like that. So we had a pretty good time, and then I ended up getting a job at Wired, so I moved up to San Francisco, so that kind of ended my work with him. But uh, we still stay in touch uh, via Twitter, which is fun. Uh huh. Well, so um, just some great and fun and exciting things that you're doing. Tell us a little bit about how your research at IFTF helps um, teams create tools uh, to for companies to navigate in these times of dramatic change. Oh, you- sure. So over the years, and I, I have not been at IFTF that long, a little over a year, and IFTF has actually been around for 50 years. So I, I may not be the, the best expert in what they do, but from, from my experience, um, I can tell you that they have developed a, a pretty incredible set of tools to help individuals and organizations make good decisions in the present by looking at what could possibly happen in the future so that they can make uh, their, their organizations more resilient. So what, what uh, we have, uh, uh, what we do is we set up a number of exercises or activities where you're asked to imagine uh, something happening given certain conditions in a scenario. So you would say, you know, imagine that in 30 years something like cold fusion would actually work or uh, that uh, uh, virtual reality headsets will be small enough that they'll look like an ordinary pair of glasses. How would that change your business? And that's not to say that that's actually going to happen. It may or may not happen. But what you're doing is you're testing the resiliency of your business to see how well it can adapt and how agile and nimble it is in, in, in changes that could come. Uh, and it's it's really one thing is it's just a lot of fun to do all these different exercises. Um, there's you know different kind of curves and you fill in little quadrants with information. It really gets you thinking. And a lot of it for me when I work with with everyone on these is just the the excitement. It gets you excited about what you're doing and makes you want to uh, take chances, be a little more risky. Uh, do something that you thought you had been wanting to do but were afraid to for one reason or another. It clarifies your objectives. Uh, it helps you identify what's essential and what you can safely ignore. So there's a lot of uh, good reasons to do it. And even though we're called Institute for the Future, we never really say that we are helping people predict the future. We're just really helping to make them resilient to changes in the future and, and um be able to thrive no matter what happens. And that, and that was really my experience and why I really got excited about not only meeting you but the work that we did is, is that whole idea that it, it's sense-making and it, it helps to give people, as you say, that clarity in terms of, um, you know, what, what potentiality is in work right now and, and thinking it through in terms of, well, if A happens, does that mean B, C, and D is going to happen? And if so, what's my potential reaction to all of that, or do I even really need to worry about it? So I, I, I think it was just so powerful, and, and it really was very helpful uh, to me. I know that you had mentioned earlier that some of the work that you're particularly interested in is around blockchains. Can you help us to understand a little bit about what that is and why it's important? Sure. So very simply, blockchain is just a database. And it's, store, it's storing information and records. But the interesting thing about it is that it is a database that is distributed so that everyone who participates has a copy of this exact same copy of the database. And there's a, there's a continuing growing list of records in that database. It could be, like I said, met, or mentioned earlier, blockchain is what powers Bitcoin. It could be all the Bitcoin transactions that have ever taken place from someone buying a cup of coffee at a store to a $150 million mysterious transfer 
which has happened many times in, in the Bitcoin world where there's hundreds of millions of dollars being changed. And so the fact that everybody has a copy of the database means that no one can change the database without being caught. So the database cannot be corrupted or changed, which is important not only in financial transactions, but it would be important in things like governance or if you wanted to um, maintain property records or, or asset transfers and things like that. The cool thing about the blockchain also is that there is no centralized control of it. Once it's set up and there are copies distributed, it's simply a set of instructions that the Internet carries out. There's no one that can stop it. If you knock out one of the copies of the database, the other 100,000 that are running are going to just keep on running without even uh, stopping for a second. And so... Imagine like today in the banking world, if you want to give transfer some money to somebody, say that they bought lunch for you and you want to pay them back, it has to go through all sorts of levels of clearing because the bank needs to make sure that you have the money in your account and the person has, has uh, a valid account and that they are the legitimate person who gets it and it's not somebody who's trying to corrupt the system. It's expensive to do. It's a big system. Uh, we like it because it works for us, but the Bitcoin blockchain doesn't require anything like that. There's no middleman at all. You have an address that you're sending digital money to, and it goes to that person. It's completely peer-to-peer. -peer. It doesn't go through any kind of central clearinghouse. There's no one that can stop it. Um, it's very easy to use. You can transfer Bitcoin to, to U.S. dollars or any kind of currency that you want on different exchanges online. And this is a huge deal for people in developing worlds. There are, there are literally billions of people who are unbanked. They don't have any access to banking services whatsoever. But all they need is a, is a smartphone um, or, a, or a computer, and they can immediately start transferring Bitcoin and sending Bitcoin to anyone in the world without anyone stopping them, for better or worse, because, as you know, there's been some criminal activity where people use Bitcoin for, for uh, ransomware and things like that. But really, the, the benefits of, of, of Bitcoin and blockchain are, are tremendous and go far beyond uh, the kinds of things that, that you read about. Uh, I'll give you one interesting example. If you um, wanted to borrow money from a financial institution and they wanted to take a look uh, you know, you need, you need, need collateral. And they say, well, you need to have at least $250,000 in an account, in your, in your uh, stock account, before we'll, we'll give you a loan. What you normally do is you'll send them your brokerage reports that show exactly how much money you have. And you may have, I don't, but I wish I did, you may have millions of dollars <laughs> in your stock account. Me too. All they need to do is see that you have $250,000 in there. With blockchain, what you could do is you could send them a verifiable message that says, I own at least $25,000. And so they, that's all they need to know. They don't need to know exactly how much you have. And, uh, you know, the same could be if you went into a bar and they wanted to see your identification to see how old you were. They don't, or to see that you're over 21. They don't need to know your exact age and they don't need to see your address on your driver's license, but they look at it anyway because. It's all on your driver's license. Instead, in the, in the blockchain world, you could just show your phone with a little QR code. They could scan it, and it would say this person is 21, age, 21 years old or older, and that's all they need to see. So that's just one small example. There's so many different things in identity, governance, uh, the, the peer-to-peer economy, where the blockchain is really going to be uh, – a game changer. And I think we're just starting to see the very beginning of, of what the blockchain can do. And another cool thing is these things called smart contracts, which are contracts that you can set up with someone and they execute on their own when certain conditions happen. So you could say, um, you know, uh, as soon as a, a, a title is transferred, then money is automatically transferred to the, the seller of the property. And 
there's no human intervention and there's no way to uh, to back out or cheat someone because once you have this thing in process, it's going to run automatically. It's just going to sense the event and say, okay, that money has hit the account, the title will be transferred. And, and so it really is like a great tool to eliminate fraud and corruption too and you know what's interesting though and this is a prime example this would literally change our relationship with money and contractual agreements and things like that one of the 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 tools that you work with with these various different things is to give people the understanding on how to think that through now we've only got about a, a minute left but is 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 that um, one of the work that you do with the visual and the content creation to help sort of ferret out what does blockchain really mean in terms of practicality? Yeah, very much. So we would talk to organizations and, and we would say, imagine this world where you have this tool at your disposal, you know, if we're talking to an insurance company or something, how – and then we'll explain how blockchain works, what it can do. How how might this change your business? What what would you start looking at now that you haven't been looking at before? And, and that's the kind of thing that we do at Institute for the Future is present them with this research that we've done into different areas and say this is uh, something that, that's happening and it will likely have an effect on your company in some way. And so it's, uh, you know, it's a good idea to prepare yourself for it and be aware of it and, and uh see how you can make this uh, help your organization thrive. Right. All right, well, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll continue our fascinating conversation with Mark and dive into something that many of you may be hearing about, and that is the Internet of Things. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Over here, here's a secret for a virus-free computer. ESET, they've been a pioneer in the antivirus industry for over 25 years. 25 years of innovative, top-rated antivirus protection. ESET's award-winning security solutions provide a safe online experience for over 100 million home and business computer owners. They are so affordable, fast, and simple to use. So be gone, you blue screen of death. ESET's on my computer. If it's not on yours, visit HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on ESET now. Here's the thing about beauty. It's pretty. At AmericanMadeBeauty.com, we're all about the pretty, making it easier for you to find what makes your beauty shine. We have essentially everything you need, and AmericanMadeBeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the U.S. of A. Imagine everything you need from the best hair, skin, and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We also think you're pretty important, so visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Browse, buy, learn. AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credentialed category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bottled brands that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. To learn how you can be part of AmericanMadeBeauty.com, visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com now. What does HealthyLife.net and Amazon.com have in common? Well, they're both available on the Internet. They both give great value. But most important, most of our positive program hosts and guests are accomplished authors. And their books are available from, you got it, Amazon.com. Now it even gets better than that. Because when you're listening on air to a HealthyLife.net host or guest, you can go directly to Amazon.com and you can order your book while you're still listening to your favorite HealthyLife.net program. So when you hear an author you like, go to the homepage of HealthyLife.net and click on Amazon.com. Where positive people and radio unite. HealthyLife.net Welcome back. I'm Patty Smucker, and you're listening to Radio AMB on HealthyLife.net. We're here with Mark 
Fraudenfelder is um, a research director at the Institute for the Future and the founding editor-in-chief of Make Magazine, the co-founder of Boing Boing. And we've heard um, a little bit about some of the work that he's been doing at the Institute for the Future and some of the other amazing work that he's done over his career. Um, we've heard something called the Internet of Things. Mark, can you tell us a little bit about what, what does that mean? Sure. So, so we, we know about the Internet, and the Internet is, is – uh, a bunch of computers that are connected to each other and people use them to communicate with each other. The Internet of Things is almost like, and this is kind of an oversimplification, but it's almost like Facebook or Twitter for objects. It's a social network for, for physical things so that they can talk to each other and communicate to each other and people can interface with them as well. It's a way for these devices to transmit to the world what's going on with them. Are they, are they uh, sensing a temperature change? Have they noticed that uh, uh, the, the uh, heat is, is – uh, the, the temperature is too low in a house? Um, have they noticed that the, a car is running low on oil? So it's taking objects and it's adding – digital wireless connectivity to them so that they can start to talk to each other and you have an environment around you that is communicating and reporting on itself all the time. And so that leads to things like smart homes or factories that uh, the machinery can, can alert uh, a human if, if the machinery is starting to break down or something, say that uh, – a bearing in a motor in a, in a machine that's uh, stamping out metal parts, if that bearing starts to fail, it will uh, start to uh, get hot. It can report that immediately to a human, and that human can go over there and replace the bearing. And so having this, this kind of Internet of Things is, is really like m making the whole world come online. And it's going to allow for some really kind of rich ways of, of orchestrating activities with people. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an interesting example. You know the uh, the Amazon Echo device that uh, people can talk to. And, right. Um, some guy has a Tesla and a uh, a Amazon Echo and then the remote control garage that he can control via the Internet. And he wired them all together so that he can just simply say, and I, I don't want to say the A word, what the echo is, because if someone is playing this on a speaker, it could activate their, their <laughs> device. But he, he said, A, please pull my Tesla out of the garage. And the Tesla, the garage door opens, the Tesla starts up, backs out of the driveway, and then pulls in front of the curb. And so that's like an example of the power of the Internet. You have these Internet-connected devices, the Echo device, the garage door, and the car. So as you get more of these items with Internet connectivity, you're, you're going to be able to uh, string them together or snap them together like Lego pieces and have all sorts of interesting things happen. It's really interesting what's happening in, in industry and manufacturing where you're getting things like smart factories that can reconfigure themselves so that when um, a new product comes online and needs to be manufactured, the equipment can change the way it operates and functions based on the new products that it needs to manufacture. And they can communicate to each other um, something like, you know, say one machine that is the painting machine it says, hold on a minute, I need uh, more, I need my paint refilled. So then the uh, the polishing station farther on the line says, okay, then I might as well slow down because I'm not going to be getting any parts from the painting station over here. So these, these machines are going to be able to communicate with each other and really uh, start taking charge of some of the things that people had been in charge of. 
And when you think about that, I mean, obviously this is this is already happening. I, I, one of the, the the quotes that I took away from our experience was that the future is uh, is already here. It's just distributed unevenly. Um, so th- this is a perfect example where I had an opportunity just a couple of weeks ago. I was at REI, phenomenal facility out outside of Scottsdale, Arizona. Everything is automated just like you're talking about, and it exists right now today, a LEED certified building that is um, state-of-the-art in every capacity and automated and efficient in ways that uh, people hadn't even really thought about. They literally had to engineer some of these various different things to be able to do them because they were the first that have ever done them. So that future is already here. What do you say to somebody who is like, oh my gosh, I, I, that's too scary? I, I, what, how do I, how would I function in that particular type of environment where machines are going to start getting smarter than humans? Well, I, I think that I think that we just have to come to the realization that everything that can be connected will be connected, mm-hmm. and it depends on what level you want to participate in that connectivity do you want to be someone who is at the nuts and bolts level designing how these things communicate with each other uh, the complex technical languages and the, the way they orchestrate with each other there there are jobs there for you but there's higher levels too where just understanding how you work with these machines uh, is is all you need to do and this is things like, you know, the, the Amazon Echo or the iPhone. Those are pretty uh, easy things to use. I mean, even little three-year-olds love to play with iPads. So I don't think that people should be afraid of, of these because there's always going to be some level at which you can participate with it in a beneficial way. So the idea that, you know, robots are going to replace our jobs they will definitely take over some jobs, but I think there's going to be uh, more opportunities there than there are uh, threats when it comes to robots. And um, the, the fact that uh, in the future, I think what's, what, what it's going to be is that you are going to be kind of evaluated in your work by how well you can work with, with robots and things like that. So, you know, I think that the, the concern somewhat is valid, but also the opportunities are out there, and I don't think that it's going to be scary. I think people will be able to get along with machines, these smart machines and connected machines and the Internet of Things and robots and artificial intelligence, and um, it, it will be, a, I think, a surprisingly rich, interesting uh, world that's full of opportunities for people. Such a powerful message because that's really at the end of the day. People talk about, well, I've, I've done this job for so many years and now that's going to go away and what am I supposed to do? The message today is uh, uh, in order to be prepared for the future, you need to be willing to be a, a learner because there's going to be different opportunities but more opportunities that lie ahead. And that's, that's very exciting. Yeah, I um, think so. so um, there's this, uh, a friend of mine, Kevin Kelly, wrote a, a book that I highly recommend called The Inevitable, about 12 inevitable tech, technological trends. Great. One well, of the things he points out in the book is... Hold on. Mark, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you... I'm going to bring you back in just a second, and I'll let you tell us what, uh, what the, he says in the book. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll continue this great conversation uh, with Mark. Don't go away. the thing about beauty. It's pretty. At AmericanMadeBeauty.com, we're all about the pretty, making it easy for you to find what makes your beauty shine. We have essentially everything you need, and AmericanMadeBeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the U.S. of A. Imagine everything you need from the best hair, skin, and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We also think you're pretty important, so visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Browse, buy, learn. AmericanMadeBeauty.com. 
For all your live or pre-recorded webcasting needs, come to earthchannel.com. Get your web-based message out to a select group or the whole world. It's easy. A pioneer in webcasting, earthchannel.com provides the best products and services to big corporations and government users. And now, this same technology is available to you. They have the best Earthcast encoders, servers, and products to meet your technical needs. But wait, don't want to mess with technical stress? No problem. They'll do it for you. EarthChannel.com is your answer. You can use webcasting for lots of things like advertising, marketing, customer support, training, and don't forget, web radio and TV. In fact, you're listening to a live EarthCast right now. So come to EarthChannel.com. Actualize your audio or video webcasting needs today. You can't beat the friendly service or the price. Call EarthChannel.com at 1-800-849-8978. That's 1-800-849-8978. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credentialed category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bottled brands that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. To learn how you can be part of AmericanMadeBeauty.com, visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com now. When you're looking for bedding, department store prices can shock you. Well, be shocked no more. Sell steak cheap, not cheap steak. That's the motto of Anna's Linens. Although they don't sell steak, they do sell the best bedding, bath, and home decor items. They strive to provide their merchandise at extreme value to their customers, and they do it. Great everyday prices on everything and military discounts. Plus, if you visit them online, they have clearance items and Internet specials. Visit them online now at HealthyLife.net's advertiser page. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net. Welcome back. I'm Patty Smucker, and you're listening to Radio AMB on HealthyLife.net. I'm here with a research director at the Institute of the Future, the founding editor-in-chief of Make Magazine, and the co-founder of Boing Boing, Mr. Mark Fraunenfelder. We've been talking about emerging technologies like blockchains and the Internet of Things, which changes the way that we interact with things like money and tracking significant changes um, overall. Um, Mark, you were telling us about um, a book that you recommend because people are going to be going through career changes and things like this. Tell us again about what you were, what you were mentioning. Oh, sure. So, yeah, Kevin Kelly, my friend, wrote a book called The Inevitable about 12 trends that are shaping our future. And one of them in the artificial intelligence section, he was talking about the fact that currently the best chess player in the world is not a human being, and nor is it a computer program. What it is is it's a combination. It's a team of a human working with a computer program. Mm-hmm. That is the best chess player right now. And, and Kevin's word for that is a centaur. A uh, centaur? As, 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 you know, the half man, half horse. This is uh-huh. half person, half artificial intelligence. Also, the best uh, uh, X-ray or, or CAT scan diagnostician is not a human doctor nor is it an AI. It's a combination of those two working together, a centaur. So if you kind of think about it, a human being just right now, a person with an iPhone or a smartphone, it's kind of a centaur. You you open it up, you look at Google, you look for directions. You you and your your smartphone together are smarter than either of you separately. Mm -hmm. So if you think of that kind of a partnership, that's what the partnership in the future with artificial intelligence will be like. You will partner with artificial intelligence. It's not going to be like a job stealer. It's going to, I think, make people's jobs more interesting and give them more opportunities. But I think, you know, the responsibility is for people to understand how to use the technology and make it work to their advantage. 
And that's really key. That, that, I think that's, again, part of why I, I love this whole topic. It really, I feel so much more empowered by understand, uh, understanding what lies ahead. We've talked about the Internet of Things and the way that it, I love your, your analogy that it's like um, a Lego set that's going to be connected together and that it's going to be able to communicate and tell humans um, what's going on. You talked a little bit about it's their, the, the ability for things to sense. Talk to us a little bit about sensing technologies and how that's going to change the way that we live. Sure. So if, if you think about life forms, humans and animals and plants and things, at, at, at a very basic level, they do three things. They sense something in the environment. It could be they sense a change in the light. They sense heat. Uh, they sense a rough surface. They sense sounds coming into their ears, and then they process those sensory signals that they received, and they analyze them, they use their memory to look at past associations with those signals, and then they decide to do something with it, and that's using their, their muscles in some way to, to respond. Um, but, you know, they open their mouth and they say something. They, they push a button. They make a decision. They uh, book a vacation. And so... We are now seeing this in um, in non-living systems. We what's happening is that machines are able to sense changes in the, the world. They they can see, they can hear, they can smell, they can feel changes in vibration and heat. In fact, they have a much richer sense of of sensory inputs than than most people do. You know, they can detect ultra violet uh, 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 light waves, they can detect radiation, um, they can detect things that we're incapable of doing, and then they can process that through computer programs to decide what to do with that sensory input, and then they can make a decision on what to do with that by doing something like turning on a motor to spin a fan to cool down a system, or they can uh, trigger an Internet event or they can tell another machine to speed up the production line. So by having these kind of artificial sensory organs attached to every device, we're turning the whole world into a big cybernetic organism or hive mind where everything is being sensed and analyzed and measured and processed and then changed as a result of that. And so... um, there's there's a tremendous amount of power in the um, in the processing of that because that's where the decisions are being made, and it's also where you know where the, where there is legitimate cause for concern about this because if we turn over control of this decision making process over to machines, have we properly encoded human values into these machines? Mm-hmm. Are they behaving ethically? Do we even know what is the proper decision to make? You know, the simple example that, that most people know about is, you know, a, a driverless car and it sees someone standing in the road and does it avoid the person standing in the middle of the road and crash into a brick wall and kill the driver or does it run over the person and save the driver? And so we're going to be faced with with, uh, you know, making machines as ethical as possible when, you know, as humans we struggle with ethics ourselves already. That's that's, uh, going to be a Mm -hmm. very interesting future for us. Right, right. And that's certainly um, interesting reading just an article today in the New York Times where the fabric of America, which was based on a very strong sense of common ethical um, code of conduct and that it's sort of fraying at the edges because do be, be, because of the political environment we are so um, uh, polarized so do we have that same common thread that we've always had um, within our history uh, so that, that it definitely is part of the, those consequences that by looking at it um, we can begin to make some decisions about um, how we uh, uh, move forward I read, though, in one of the um, P- 
pieces that that uh, talks about uh, virtual reality in, in in particular that we can actually impact people's health by giving them the opportunity to see in a virtual reality world what the consequences of their personal decisions are on their health. So that's an example where it can be used in a more positive way. Wow, that's interesting. So you, you can see what happens to your own body if, if you go down a certain path of health decisions? Right, exactly, exactly. So you, they, you're talking about the whole idea of being able to create um, avatars that allow you to have this sort of series of decisions, and based on that, you're able to actually see what life would look like 10, 15, 20 years from now if you make these choices as compared to those choices. Wow, that, that sounds very powerful because, you know, a lot of people um, quit smoking after they've had a, a cancer scare. If you could give them that same feeling, that same scare well before there was any cause for concern, that might get them to quit smoking a lot sooner. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. All right, well, we're going to take another break, and when we come back, um, we are going to talk a little bit about some of the um, exciting things that are near and dear to Mark's heart, uh, like his most recent book, uh, the uh, Maker Dad book. So stay with us. We'll be right back. the thing about beauty it's pretty at americanmadebeauty.com we're all about the pretty making it easy for you to find what makes your beauty shine we have essentially everything you need and americanmadebeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the u.s of a imagine everything you need from the best hair skin and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at americanmadebeauty.com we also think you're pretty important so visit americanmadebeauty.com browse buy learn americanmadebeauty.com When you're looking for bedding, department store prices can shock you. Well, be shocked no more. Sell steak cheap, not cheap steak. That's the motto of Anna's Linens. Although they don't sell steak, they do sell the best bedding, bath, and home decor items. They strive to provide their merchandise at extreme value to their customers, and they do it. Great everyday prices on everything and military discounts. Plus, if you visit them online, they have clearance items and Internet specials. Visit them online now at HealthyLife.net's advertiser page. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credentialed category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bought brands that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. To learn how you can be part of AmericanMadeBeauty.com, visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com now. Oh, man, it never fails. My suitcase just got ripped apart. Life is a journey. Make it a pleasant one. You Samsonite, you know the name. For almost a century, Samsonite luggage has proved itself to be the worldwide leader in innovative travel solutions. Let it be yours. Visit HealthyLife.net's affiliate Samsonite on our homepage and click to look at the fine luggage from suitcases to golf travel bags. And don't forget, take a look at their travel accessories. Make life a journey, a pleasant one, with Samsonite. HealthyLife.net, where positive overcomes negative. Hi, I'm Patty Smucker, and we're back here at Radio AMB on HealthyLife.net. Um, I've just been enjoying this conversation we've been having with blogger, illustrator, journalist, co-owner and of the collaborative weblog Boing Boing, and researcher with the Institute for the Future, Mr. Mark Fraudenfelder. Mark, you've published 22 books, and most recently, um, Maker Dad. Tell us a bit about the book. Sure. So I uh, have two daughters, and... We enjoy working on projects together, and so I looked around for some some project books that I could do with my daughters, and I realized there aren't there, there weren't any books that were especially written for father daughter do it yourself projects, and I thought it would be really fun to do something where a, a book full of activities that dads and daughters could do together, and um, 
both have fun doing them at the same time. And so that's how I came up with this idea for a book called Maker Dad. And it's got 24 different projects in there, arranging in, in different, different levels of complexity. And uh, some, some projects are electric, some are more craft-based, um, some use computer programming. Uh, so I have things like making a, a skateboard out of, uh, out of plywood. Uh, making some furniture that looks like a kind of a mid-century style rocking chair. I have uh, a, a one on how to make a molded soap that's uh, actual mold of your thumb. So it's like little bars of soap that look just like your thumb or your, your kid's thumb. Mm -hmm. um, blowing giant bubbles, how to write a, uh, a, a computer video game, silk screening t-shirts, uh, making jewelry pendants that look like little miniature Neapolitan ice cream sandwich bars, uh, some, a few magic tricks in there because I, I love magic tricks. So it's a, a huge variety, making musical instruments, and uh, it was so much fun to, to do this book, and I had a lot of fun. I took all the pictures for the book, and my daughter's patiently modeled uh, for the photographs in it, and uh, we had a lot of fun putting this book together. It's always fun to look back at it. It's been couple of years and so my kids are already a lot younger looking than they are now. <laughs> and well and it, it, it sounds like a great way also to create that thinking um, for a young person that they have that capacity. You talked earlier uh, in our interview about being excited about the maker movement. Tell us a little bit about the maker movement. Sure. So th the maker movement really has been around for a long time. It's, it's people um, putting together, making things on their own time when they're not working and they want to do something. So it could be, you know, making your own furniture, uh, making your own sauerkraut uh, or yogurt or being a beekeeper, um, keeping chickens, making uh, your own ham radio, making your own uh, robots, all those kinds of things. The, the cool thing today that's different about this maker movement that's been around for you know, well over 100 years, is that there are all of a sudden a bunch of different tools and systems out there that allow anyone to, to make things that really look fantastic and look like, if you want, they could look like something that came from a, a consumer electronics company or something or a, a high-level manufacturer. There's, For example, there's a laser cutter, which is... Um, a laser cutter is just uh, a machine that can cut any kind of flat material, plastic, wood, leather, um, into any shape that you want. And uh, so these laser cutters are, are getting less and less expensive, easier and easier to use. And basically, if you can sketch something on the computer or even with your, with your just pencil and paper, you can cut things out on the laser cutter. Um, this Glowforge laser cutter, I've seen is a $3,000 laser cutter, which is kind of expensive, but when you see what it can make, it's incredible. People have made beautiful leather wallets where the little stitching holes are cut by the laser cutter. The pattern in the wallet, uh, you can make sandals with it. You can make uh, a wooden enclosures for electronics projects. You can make beehives, all sorts of stuff. And then 3D printers, you can basically print any kind of 3D plastic part that you want. So you can make toys or puzzles or what I use it for, my 3D printer is if something breaks around the house, I'll, I'll measure it and then make a, a replacement with a 3D printer. So, and then 3D printers, the, the price has been dropping because they've been around for a while. You can get a, a decent 3D printer for about $300 now. So you have laser cutters, 3D printers, you have things called milling machines, which are uh, machines that will cut away metal or wood or plastic with a little blade and so that you can basically set it up and it will carve out any part that you want. These kinds of things just, you know, 10 or 15 years ago were incredibly expensive and you could only find them on, on shop floors and they cost tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now you can have a really sophisticated system in your garage or basement for under a thousand dollars and you could be making stuff that is just unbelievably cool that um, 
would, would blow away the traditional woodworker of, of 15 years ago. And the thing is you don't need to be super skilled at woodworking or something like that. You could make a, a really nice-looking ukulele in a weekend that sounds like one that you would buy at a nice music store. So the fact that you have these kinds of tools at your disposal, it's like desktop manufacturing uh, is, is a good comparison. Thinking of desktop publishing revolution in the 80s, we have the desktop manufacturing revolution. It means, and um, we're here. And then the, the other great thing about it is you can go online and you can get connected to communities of people who are, are makers of things, and they're usually very open and happy to share their plans with you, uh, videos on how they do things. And so the, you know, the knowledge is there and the tools to make it are there. So all you really need is, is kind of the passion and the curiosity to do it. Absolutely. Well, it, and it is very exciting. It's a part of my interest in having this conversation because really what you do is open up through the work that you're doing, the books that you've written, the talks. You're, you're a, 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 a highly sought after speaker that people can engage um, to speak. But you really are providing that practical foresight for a world undergoing rapid change. And I think one of the, the messages as we wrap this, this show up is that, yes, the future um, – is exciting. Yes, it's happening really fast, but by getting engaged, you can begin to become a rapid learner. The tools are there. You just mentioned three printer, a 3D printer, uh, the laser, um, and all of these very sophisticated things that you can have that you can engage and begin learning how to be a part of this maker movement and the, and the future that lies ahead. Thank you for all of the amazing things that you're doing, Mark. It's exciting to hear about you and learn, learn about the work that you're doing. Thank you so much, Patty. This has really been fun talking with you. Well, and if, you, if somebody wanted to um, learn more about you and get involved with some of the things that you're doing, how do they reach you? Let's see. I think um, probably the best way to do it would be to go to uh, uh, markfraunfelder.com. Okay, and um, we're going to, I'll have it on our website as well, but um, we will spell um, your last name real quickly. Okay, sure. It's, it's, uh, it's F as in Frank, R-A-U-E-N, F as in Frank, E-L, D as in David, E-R. Okay, so Mark Freudenfelder and um, dot com and there he's just got a ton of stuff on his website go visit him and again thanks for your time today and we love to look at the future and having you back um, to keep up with everything that you're doing thank you patty all right, well, that'll do it for us today. Join us next week. Our program next week, I won't be here for. I'm going to be away in Chile uh, speaking at an international beauty conference. My guest host, Dean White, will be here and bringing you a story about American-made services. Don't miss Dean, and I'll be back in two weeks. Send us your comments and questions to request at American Made Beauty. Thanks for listening to Radio A&B, where we think pretty is pretty important in all things in beauty. Thank you.